Retro Ghetto. Hi everybody and welcome back to the Retro Ghetto. Very special episode today. We're on the long journey to Cardiff in Wales. I'm heading to a shop that I've been wanting to go to for quite some time. I saw it first of all on the Leicester Vintage Toy Channel and it looks like everything that I want in a shop. It's full of retro video games, full of amazing toys. So yeah, we're on the three hour journey. Um, we've already exhausted I Spy. We're on two toilet stops and he wants a third. <laughs> Hence his happy face. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to get there and uh, obviously be taking you guys with a full tour with me. Toilet stop number three. This time it's me that needed to start, but we are gonna get there eventually. I don't play games with my son PlayStation. Man at old school like an Atari game, a tiger, the man with the tiger flamer. This shit reality, not like Sega, Dreamworks, Mega Drive, my master system, S64, the Super Nintendo, we missed them. And if man wanna challenge on Tekken, I'll twist them.
Okay, so we are back in the retro ghetto and a shop so good I went to another country for it. Yes, it was only Wales and it was well worth the three hour drive. Have you seen from some of the footage? I mean, this place is phenomenal. It's like the perfect mix of both games and toys and aesthetically it's one of the most pleasing shops I've been in because it was full of amazing things but it didn't feel overcrowded, it wasn't claustrophobic. I didn't have to do too much digging or getting dirty to see everything. Tom's done an amazing job with the store and I had a great time there, as did the whole family. It's very much a Japanese inspired feel. There's a lot of Japanese merchandise and things that you struggle normally to see in the UK. So it was always nice to see things like that, as well as a few grails on display, which we'll get to a bit later on. Just before we get into the pickups, I want to say you might hear some background noise, which I'm not going to apologise for. That's because the Retro Ghetto 3.0 is well underway. Which this noise is music to my ears, so if you do hear any builders outside, they are cracking on and that's what that is. There's going to be another update on the Retro Ghetto 3.0 dropping on Sunday. And right, what everyone wants to see, the pickups. I've got some amazing stuff from Super Tomato and I'm going to also put a bit more footage of the store in as well. There's so much things in there I wanted to get videoed, so you're going to be seeing more and more footage throughout these pickups. The first thing I want to show you guys is what RG Jr. picked up. Tom was amazing with the little man, he really was. Uh, RG Jr.'s got a new best mate, you wouldn't leave him alone. But it was like they were both uh, loving it. Little man was loving seeing all the toys and Tom was just, I think, happy to see um, what the primary audience is for toys, right? Children, um, enjoying this kind of stuff, wanting it, wanting to play with it. He was a bit fixated on some of the vintage Star Wars stuff and Tom actually gifted him a couple of toys which was really nice of him. The first one was this vintage Star Wars toy. I was trying to convince him to get newer things. I didn't want him to break this. Um, but yeah, Tom gifted him in this which is very kind. I'm not a massive Star Wars guy so I don't know what character this is but I'm sure you guys do and you have to let me know in the comments. And RG Jr. also took a shine to this little R2-D2 um, and I think if you press it, yep. And again, Tom let him have this as a gift as well. Um, I always find it's a good way to judge one's character is how they interact with kids and Tom was absolutely amazing with RG Jr. and it was much appreciated by myself and the family. I did however want to actually buy something for Little Man whilst I was there. I wanted to give Tom some money for one of his toys and uh, we settled on this. This is a guy called Freight Train. Um, Tom was saying that this was part of the G.I. Joe line when they actually tried to make larger figures. Apparently it didn't sell very well. Um, I know it's out of their normal line and it's a bit of a shock probably to their fans, but I really like these figures. They had a few of these toys on display. They're really nicely articulated, really nice detail on it. All in fantastic condition. This one had all its accessories. I don't know where his weapon is. I mean, RG Jr. has been throwing this around for the last week or so now. But uh, yeah, he was happy with this and I was happy to uh, have this as well because when he's forgot about it, this might just find its way onto one of my shelves. Right, and on to my pickups. And the first thing that I want to show you is a Nintendo Wii game. As you know, I'm in love with sleeve covers and whenever I see a sleeve cover I don't already own, I tend to go at it and I really want it. And I found this, the Conduit Special Edition on the Nintendo Wii. Really nice sleeve cover, lovely artwork. Um, this was a 2008 first person shooter um, published by Sega. It was actually nominated for a couple of IGN awards, so I don't know if it's held the test of time, but it reads as though it should be quite a decent game. Um, obviously I haven't played it, but with it being on the Wii in a first person shooter, I'm sure it'll be fun with the sort of nunchuck accessory um, to play it that way. So it's definitely one that I will be giving a go, but as I say guys, you know what I'm like when it comes to sleeve covers. I just could not leave this behind. And the next game that I picked up, if I don't butcher the name, is Akai Katana. I've been absolutely loving my shmups at the moment and uh, yeah, it's a genre that I've got to relatively late in life. I'm not naturally blessed at them. I've only finished a couple, but I love the challenge. It really does feel like one of the most purest forms of gaming and it feels like such an achievement when you do actually beat these kind of games. This was actually from Rising Star Games, also did Dodon Patchy. again I'm probably butchering these names, and Death Smiles, a couple of other interesting games for you guys to keep a look at for, that were released on the PAL for the Xbox 360. Um, primarily I'm not a bullet hell kind of guy, but maybe I'm thinking I'm going to graduate to it at some point. I'm playing for as many shooters as I can, so maybe I'm getting ready for bullet hell. Um, this absolutely beautiful game, nice rock soundtrack, beautiful visuals as I say, and one of the reasons I love picking up games like this on the Xbox 360 is my kiosk. I'm always looking for games that I can put into the Xbox 360 kiosk. Games that lend themselves to sort of standing up. And I definitely feel that sort of schmops and bullet hells definitely fall into that category. So yeah, and what you don't get with modern games, everything by the way in that shop is in beautiful condition, this included, um, is a manual like this. You'll be seeing it on screen now. Full colour manual, beautiful artwork throughout. And I really think that's something that we're missing in modern gaming. But yeah, very, very happy to have added this to my ever-increasing Xbox 360 collection. 
And as you guys know, I'm always looking for different display items, things that I can add to my shelves, things that are weird and wonderful. And I definitely think that you can find those in abundance at Super Tomato. And one of the things that I picked up was this. This is by a company called So Analog. Uh, this 10 bit dough, dough, so analog. These are called <laughs> Tendo 8 bit bunch, I believe. Uh, various different designs of these NES type carts were made from different designers and manufacturers and have been put out as like collectibles over time. I wasn't actually aware of this until I went into the store and saw this one, but there's smaller ones and then larger ones like this. Most of them have different designs, some of which are based on existing franchises and video games. And there's also some really interesting custom ones on the internet. I chose this one. This one's a bit like a, a DIY one. It comes with stickers so you can put your own design on it. I might put like a retro ghetto sticker on it or something like that. And I went with the plain white one because I'm really looking to keep the 3.0 once it's built very clean. I want everything white, clean. I've got so much stuff. I don't want it to feel too sort of crowded. I don't want it to be like, you know, the walls are closing in on you. So I'm really trying to keep it a nice, clean, white aesthetic space. So this really fits that bill. Um, as I say, never seen it before. I love things like this and I'm very happy to add it to the shelves. Retro ghetto. Sadly, that's everything that I picked up. The reason I say sadly is because my grail of all grails was in there. Now that word gets thrown around a lot, right? Everyone picks up a grail, everything's a grail because it costs a lot of money or whatever, but my absolute grail would be a Super Nintendo kiosk. You know that I love my kiosks. I had loads, sold a few, kept a couple, bought one more since then. But the grail is the Super Nintendo kiosk. He actually had the part of one there. It just should have a base with it as well, but I'd be happy enough just with the top piece. That's the most important bit. He had it in store, unsurprisingly, and I'd be the same. He doesn't want to sell it, which I completely understand. When are you going to get another one? And how do you put a price on it? They're only going to keep going up in price as well. I did tell him if he ever decides to sell it, Tom, if you're watching, remember me, right? Because I definitely would want to buy that. Yeah, that's absolute grails right there. But he didn't want to buy it. I was taking pictures with it like it was on a Tinder date. <laughs> I've got about 100 pictures on my phone of me in this kiosk. I think the missus was getting a little bit worried, actually. Um, same with the Dreamcast kiosk. Other really nice piece. Not quite a grail for me, because SNES is my favourite console of all time, as you can see by the walls behind me. But yeah, the Dreamcast one is really nice as well, but that wasn't for sale either. But yeah, I just want to give a massive shout out to Tom. Um, he did me an amazing deal on all this stuff. What I would say is if you're buying in multiples, he will do a great deal. From my experience, I was very, very happy with the pricing that he gave me. And if you're ever in the area or in Wales generally, make sure you're checking out Tom and Super Tomato. You will not be disappointed. Genuinely one of the best stores I've been to in the UK. There's actually another toy shop not too far away as well in the city centre called Galactic Attic. Unfortunately on the Tuesday when I was there, it's closed. So make sure you're checking their opening hours online. But yeah, you can always hit two birds with one stone if you're ever in the Cardiff area. So all that's left to say again is a massive shout out to Tom for his hospitality. Love the store. Thank you so much. I'll definitely be back when I'm in the area again. So much going on with the channel guys, as you can hear the 3.0 is in full effect, there'll be another update coming this Sunday. And whilst I was on my travels and going around the UK, I filmed two more store tours, one of which is, yeah, you'll see it when the time comes, but yeah, it's genuinely shocking. As always, play your games, keep it retro, thank you for watching, I'll see you on the next one, take care. Retro Ghetto. <laughs>